Hi everyone, welcome back to the Fundamentals of Print Design. I'm Nikki and we are going to design our brochure in this lesson. So we already have our documents set up, our guides are placed, our panels are ready to go. So now it's time to design. Now I'm going to walk you through how this design came to be. So we're going to place all of these items and it'll help you learn some of the basic features of InDesign and how to think about design. But I'm also going to talk to you about options when it comes to placing your elements because I didn't start this project just immediately knowing this is how it's going to look. So there's a lot of decisions that you make along the way using those elements of design and principles of design that we discussed in earlier lessons to place your elements based on the content that you have available. So if you're starting out with just a blank document, the question is, where do you begin? And it's super important to kind of have an idea of what your overall style and theme is so that you can stick to that as you move along. So the first part is obviously what is the theme of your document? And in our brochure, it's a dance. It's a dance studio, but it's still a marketing piece. It still needs to be professional. And we are using a modern style here. And a lot of my design actually ends up being very clean and very modern looking. It's not too specific as far as the overall style goes and the theme. It's just clean and modern. And then I throw in some other elements just for some visual contrast. So while we are going to duplicate this design, it's important to realize that all of you are going to develop your own styles and how you use your content and your layout. But this is just going to teach you kind of how to go about a design and how to use InDesign to fulfill that for you. But your project, you do not have to make an exact duplicate of this because as I said, your styles will be different. Okay, so when I'm designing a brochure, I actually start with the cover. I love starting with the cover and once I get that done, I feel like it helps along with the rest of the items and how they're going to lay out. So we have our first image that we're going to drop in. So when you're ready to place an image, remember that is Control D or Command D on a Mac. And I have all of my photos ready to go in my components folder. So I'm just gonna select that blue photo and drop it in here. And then we're going to size it for the space. Now, this is a trick that works when your image is larger and you're going to scale it down. There's several ways that you can scale an image. You can use your features up here. You can actually give a width, height specific here. But I like to just hit Control Shift, Command Shift on a Mac, and, and drag this to, oop, I'm gonna go back. If you ever make a mistake, Control Z is your friend as far as shortcuts go. And I'm just going to fit this to our red line. And this doesn't have to be exact as long as your image extends beyond the bleed. Remember that red line is a bleed and you want your image to go all the way. So this is where decisions are to be made here. If you hit W, you can preview what this is going to look like when it's printed. And so you can play with this image because it, it blends off the page. So you can position this however you want to. And therefore, I'm going to move this across a little bit so she fills my composition slightly better. Okay, something like that. Now, you can see that this is extending into the back. I do not want that. I want my panel to be very precise. So. All you have to do is click this and drag it to my middle guide. Click this anchor, drag it to my bleed guide. And now I've essentially cropped my photo to the space that I want it to fill. And then if you hit W, then you have kind of a more interesting fill of the space. So this is going to be greatly dependent on the photo that you have available and how you fill the space with that. So the next step is to place our title. And we have the word dance. And I'm just going to size this really quickly. 
and we have the word studio. So I'm just going to hold down alt shift and make a duplicate of this text box and type the word studio. So this is how I usually place my text. I will just basically use very simple fonts immediately. And then I start thinking about the font that I want to use. So we have some negative space right here. So I think our title would work really well in this negative space. You don't really want to cut off the image. It's such a fantastic, detailed, elaborate image that to put text over her, I think would really detract from her. So we have this clear space up here. So that would make a better decision for placing our title than putting words all over her. Okay, so again, a couple things to keep in mind here is the layout and, and use of your negative space, keeping things spaced far apart, not cluttering things. That is a design principle. And then the hierarchy of our text. So immediately you cannot see your text here. It's black. So we, we definitely need to change the color, right? So I'm just going to do a quick view overprint. I usually work in this overprint preview to get rid of those outline boxes. It, it's harder for me to see my design as I'm moving along when I have those boxes. So that's a way to get rid of those. And then when you click on it, it activates so you know what's selected. So immediately the first thing I'm going to do is highlight this text, go over here to swatches and change that to a white. Immediately it's so much better and it pops off. And I'm going to do the same thing to dance. Okay. So now Dance Studio, that works, but it's still kind of blah, right? So let's make these stand out. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Let's take it to say 50. Okay, that's a little too big. 45. Okay. 40 is better. Okay. And I want to change the font here. Again, I have a very clean and modern style in mind for this brochure. So this serif font is not really going to give the look that I want. So I'm going to go to a much more modern looking font, which means that you may have to adjust your font size accordingly. And I'm going to move that down. <clears throat> okay, so now we have our font for studio and now we have dance. So again, you could just dupli duplicate it. If you, if you end up doing what I keep doing and accidentally hitting that, you can lock this image, lock the position of it right there. So then you don't accidentally keep doing what I was doing. Now we can just work on our text. Okay, so now we have studio in place. Now what do we do with dance? Now remember, we have a hierarchy in mind. So we could just duplicate the word studio here and just say dance. Okay, that's one way to do it. But in my mind, again, that's that's pretty standard, pretty boring. So when I'm thinking of the font that I want to use, we have the robe for studio, but we may want to have a more written font for the word dance. So I have one already in mind here. Genesis that, and then we need to make this substantially larger so that we can see it. Okay. So that just gives a little visual hierarchy, some interest into our title. The word dance implies movement. The actual font used is a lot more of a movement. So there you have it. So we can leave it as such and move this over slightly and a little bit up. But I'm going to move, take this one step farther and put that on a slight angle. Okay, so now it's 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 in a good spot. We have a firm studio and then we have a playful dance and then it's at a slight angle. So these little tricks are ways to really enhance your design, make it look more professional and give you a visual item that really stands out. Okay, one more thing that I see here is that we have a lot of blue and then we have white. So in order to contrast this blue, this is something that I will do if there's one color that's pretty dominant. I'm going to throw in a highlight color here and I'm going to use the word dance to do that. And I'm going to create a new color swatch and I'm thinking I want some sort of orangey salmon color. 
for this. Always make sure that when you're working in print that you have CMYK and process as your default option. And so when you have your color set, just hit add and it adds it to your swatches and see what you got. Okay. So now I just eyeballed that and automatically I can see that is a little bit too dark. So InDesign makes it really easy to change up your swatches once you have one created. So you can just hit preview and then you can continue to work on these sliders a bit until you have a color that is a little bit more what you're looking for. And then you can preview it with W. There you go. So immediately the word dance now stands out from studio, but dance studio still works together as one element. And that orange really contrasts beautifully with that blue color, but it's not overwhelming. You're not adding a million colors. You still just have really four main colors in this image with your grays and your blues, your white and your orange. Okay, so now the cover's done. That was easy, right? Okay, so we continue on with the rest of our document and I, I tend to just move this way. You can design however you want to, but I'm just gonna move from right to left. So now we have our back cover. Now, if you can remember from this, we have some basic elements on the back cover of a brochure. Uh, I just chose to do a nice little quote here and then basic information about the studio. So you can see that this mimics this. So we definitely want to create that visual repeating elements is very crucial to having a consistent design that looks like everything works together. So a quick way to do that is just to duplicate what you've already created. So just hold alt shift and drag down. Okay. And now we're going to say love dance question mark and this one the love needs to be more of a gray color so again I'm going to create a new swatch take this all the way down to sorry this should all be zero to get gray okay so we need like a dark gray here so it stands out against the white and then this white color, I want to pick up blue. So when you're deciding your colors, it's important to use items from your image. So you're going to use colors from your image that also creates a nice cohesive unit when you use colors that are already existing in your document. So you can pick up your eyedropper here and grab a nice blue. And then one thing that you want to do is not leave it at that. You see that it's highlighted here, but immediately create a swatch with that. Now, when you grab the eyedropper, it auto selects it an RGB. So you need to change that to CMYK, then add that swatch to your document. Okay. And then I'm just going to shift click both of these and drag these into our document. So now you can see that we have a nice, repetition going on with our design elements and then we're using colors that already exist in our document. Oop, need to do that. Okay, so I'm going to move this up a little bit so we have some room for our other text. So the other text that we had was just the name of the studio. I am just going to copy this so I get the same the same text and paste it here. But just so you can see, we'll talk about the text in here. I have a different font here, another modern sans serif font. We're using Futura. And you can see that we have some lighter font here, but I have bolded the word Dance Studio. So we have the Futura light for the main text. But if we want to highlight the name of the studio, I have gone with a bolder version of that font. And that creates, again, that visual hierarchy. So you can just type in any anything that you want in here and then you can place it underneath the quote. And then the final element that we had was a website. So again, I'm a big fan of just duplicating the text that you already have so you don't have to recreate things from scratch. And I do want this website to stand out, so I am going to use the bolder 
ver, uh, bolder version of that and make this a little bit bigger so it stands out. Okay. And then you can select all of these. I'm just shift clicking all of those and bring that down so it lines up with this maroon line. Okay. And we're going to leave the back very basic. It just has the information about the business. And then we move on to this other inside panel. So this is another opportunity to drop in an image. So control D, command D, and we're going to use this guy. It comes in kind of small. So again, just control shift to fill the space. And we are using our guides. Remember to use your guides. And it's a little big, so I'm going to go straight there. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we have an image. Now, when you're thinking about your layout and composition, it is important to look at the space that you have available. Without this image, you have a lot of opportunities of layout choices here. But again, I'm keeping it very simple. We have we don't have a lot of content versus, as far as text goes. I really want to play up these big images. So dropping this in here, you can see how it looks here. You can move it down here. Whatever works for you, there's a lot of design choices here. Okay, but I'm going to leave this up top here. And then you see that you have some space down here. So you could just drop in some more text into the white space. That's fine. Because really when you look at your brochure, these two aren't going to be viewed together like this. This is going to be folded inside. So there will be some other images and content that's going to work with or against that depending on your design. So you could do that, but I think because we have that solid white background that this is an opportunity to have some more color come in. So I'm going to place a rectangle box over here in this white space and I'm going to click and drag it and use my guides to place it right there. And if you zoom in a little bit you can make sure everything lines up the way that it should. Okay. Now, you can leave it at this color if you want to, but I'm going to create more of a white, gray, and blue for the dominant colors of my brochure and use that orange only as a highlight color. So, we're going to go back to our blue that we used for the word dance instead. Okay, and I'm going to put this behind our image to make sure we didn't cut off anything. Okay, so now we have a box for content. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to copy this text box again to save some time. And we're going to place that here. And always use your guides. And make sure no text goes beyond this margin line and it doesn't go into that. Now, again, I used uh, the same font I did over here, but I just capitalized it over here. That's a way that you can auto cap capitalize all of your text. And we want those to stand out individually. So hip hop, jazz, modern, all the types of dance, we want those to stand out. Now, the other thing about this text box is if you go right click on any text box, text frame options, you can add columns to your text box. And I have two here, and that's how we get the two columns of text. Okay, so the only other thing that I want to add to this is a circle kind of ellipse tool here. So we're going to drag out this circle like so. And I do want that to be that orange color so it pops off this blue and gives us a nice a nice highlight. And I'm going to give our circle a stroke. Let's give it three and I'm going to use oh I want to use a gray. So when you're when you're in your swatches this is your stroke color and that's your fill color. So if you get what happens and this happens a lot uh, you just hit the arrow and reverse that. Okay. And let me see, I actually might want our stroke to be white. Uh, 
think I want it to be a lighter gray. So I'm going to create a new color swatch and just do a really light gray. There we go. Okay. And then the text that we had for that was this text register now. And I'm just doing this um, to save time on having to retype everything. So again, we have a hierarchy in our text. We have a really bold register action word, bold register, all caps. And then we have the word now, a lighter version of that font. So you have some visual difference in the words. Okay. So now we have our outside brochure ready to go. So that didn't take too horribly long to get our elements in place. It saved us time by having the photos ready to go and the content ready to go. So now we can move on to the inside of our brochure where we're going to further our design and I'll show you ways to copy over elements from the front page into the inside page so that you can maintain a consistent design throughout your project. Thanks for watching.